Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to lecture 29 on measure and integration. Um, in the past few lectures, we have been looking at measure and integration on product spaces. So, let us just, we will continue doing that uh, in this lecture also. Uh, so, we will be studying what are called Fubini's theorems. We had proved uh, some versions of Fubini's theorems in the previous lectures. So, let us recall what are those uh, theorems that we have proved. So, in the, we first proved what is called Fubini's theorem 1, which said that suppose f is a uh, function defined on the product space x cross y taking values in the real line and suppose this function f is non-negative and it is measurable with respect to the product sigma algebra a times b. So, f is a non-negative measurable function, then uh, we claim the following statements hold namely if we fix one of the variables for this function say x naught belonging to x or fix the other variable y naught belonging to y, then with respect to the other variable, these functions become uh, non-negative measurable with respect to the corresponding sigma algebras. So, for example, if x 0 is in x is fixed, then the function y going to f of x 0 y is a function of the variable y on the space y. So, it becomes measurable with respect to the sigma algebra b. And similarly, for every fixed x 0, the function for every uh, fixed y 0 in y, the function x going to f of uh, x y 0 is a measurable function on x with respect to the sigma algebra a. So, these two, so for every one of the variables fixed in the other variable, it becomes a non-negative measurable function. So, once it is non-negative measurable, you can integrate it out. So, look at the integral of f x y d mu x, the variable y is fixed. So, you are integrating with respect to x. So, the integral depends on y. So, this gives us a function y going to integral of x of f x y with respect to the variable x. And similarly, if you integrate out the other variable y, then you get a function of x namely x going to integral over y of f x y d mu y. So, the, the second claim is that these functions are again non-negative measurable functions of y and x respectively. And once uh, these are non-negative measurable functions, you can integrate out the other variable now. So, integrate the with respect to the variable x. So, uh, you get one of the iterated integrals namely integral with respect to x and then integral with respect to y of f x y d nu y is equal to is equal to the other iterated integral namely first integrate with respect to x and then with respect to y. Uh, the, these two iterated integrals are equal and the claim is this is equal to the integral of the given non-negative function f x y over with respect to the product sigma algebra. So, as we had uh, uh, stress that the importance of this theorem lies in the fact that to integrate a function of two variables f x y we can fix either of the variables first, integrate it out and then integrate out the other variable. So, you can in do integration with respect to one variable at a time. So, this was uh, the called Fibonacci theorem 1 for functions which are non-negative measurable f x y. And then we extended this theorem to functions which are uh, integrable. So, that we called as Fibonacci theorem 2 and that stated that let f be a a integrable function on the product sigma algebra uh, product space. So, f is in L 1 of mu cross nu. Then the following statements uh, hold namely, if you fix one of the variables say x or y, then uh, as a function of the other variable, these functions are integrable, but not for almost all um, uh, variable fix for almost all uh, points uh, whichever are fixed. For, so, for example, if um, you are fixing y, then it says that for almost all y, the function x going to f of x y is an integrable function and similarly for uh, every 
almost all x fixed y going to f of x y is a integrable uh, function. So, when you fix one variable at a time for almost all uh, uh, such fixings the function of the other variable are integrable. So, you can integrate out. So, you get function y going to integral over x of f x y d mu x and similarly, the other function is x going to the integral over y with respect to y of f x y d mu y. So, these two functions are again. So, the claim is that these two functions are again integrable uh, with respect to the corresponding measures nu and mu. And so, you can integrate them out and what you get is that the iterated integrals once again in this case are equal and equal to the integral of the product uh, pro of the function with respect to the product measure. So, basically what we are saying is that the two iterated integrals are equal to the integral of the uh, function with respect to the product measure whenever f is a uh, integrable function. So, these two theorems we had proved and we want to uh, give a one more uh, version of this theorem. So, to do that we need to uh, prove a proposition about integrable functions on the product uh, space. So, let us take a function f uh, on the product space f x y on the product space a cross b. Then the claim is that the following statements are equivalent for one the function is l 1 function is uh, as a product as a function of two variables the function is integrable. So, that is f belongs to l 1. Secondly, if you look at the absolute value of the function f and look at its iterated integral with respect to x or y. So, look at the absolute value of the function f that is a non negative measurable function. So, look at its uh, iterated integral first integral with respect to x and then with respect to y that is finite. So, that is the second uh, condition and the third is you can interchange this. So, look at the other iterated integral that first integral with respect to y and then with respect to x. So, then this is the second iterated integral that is finite and fourthly. So, these three conditions we want to show these three conditions are equivalent. So, let us prove them. So, let us uh, first assume. So, f is a function given on the product space x cross y to r okay. and so let us assume one assume one that is namely saying that f belongs to l 1 of x cross y. To show we want to show two namely that the iterated integral of mod f x y d mu of x and then integrate that with respect to y. So, that is d nu y is finite. So, this is what we want to show. Now, since f is um, since f is integrable, so the condition that f is integrable. So, one implies that integral uh, of the function mod of f x y with respect to the product sigma algebra uh, product measure mu cross nu is finite over the product space. right? And now, let us uh, note that mod f x y is a non negative is a non negative measurable function on x cross y. So, it is a non negative measurable for x cross y. So, uh, Fubini's theorem 1 is applicable. So, by Fubini's theorem 1, so we get implies by Fubini's theorem 1, which was for a non negative. So, by Fubini's theorem 1 for non negative functions, what we get is that the iterated integral of so mod f x y, the iterated integral with respect to x and then with respect to y d uh, mu x d nu y must be equal to the double uh, the integral over the product space x cross y of mod f x y d of mu cross nu which is given to be finite. 
Okay. So, that implies that the, uh, this iterated integral is finite by uh, the second condition. Okay. So, what we have shown is, so hence, so 1 implies 2. Okay. Let us uh, uh, try to show that uh, uh, 2 implies 1. Okay. So, let us uh, show that 2 implies 1. So, what is 2? So, the condition 2 says that it inter integral over x of mod f x y d mu x that integrated with respect to y d nu y is finite. Okay. That is given to be finite. So, once again, once again we observe that mod of f x y is a non negative measurable function. So, by implies by Fubini's theorem 1 that the double integral. So, now we can revert that. So, double uh, integral that means integral of the product space of f x y d mu cross nu must be of absolute value of f x y must be equal to the iterated integral. So, that is integral over y integral over x of mod f x y d of uh, d mu x and d nu of y and that is given to be finite by 2. So, implies that 1 holds namely integral of mod f with respect to the product measure is finite that is that f belongs to L 1. So, what we have shown is that uh, the condition 1 is equivalent to condition 2 and uh, a similar proof uh, implies that condition 2 is also equivalent to condition 1. So, saying that the function is integrable is equivalent to saying that uh, the either of the iterated integrals of mod f are finite. So, all these three are equivalent conditions. So, these can be put into um, the statement of the Fubini's theorem. So, combining Fubini's theorem 1, 2 and then this proposition gives us what I call as the combined uh, Fubini's theorem. Basically, combined Fubini's theorem gives you conditions under which you can say that the iterated integrals of a function of two variable are equal to are equal and equal to the integral of the uh, uh, function over the product measure space. So, let us look at the uh, combined uh, Fubini's theorem which says let x a mu and y b nu b sigma finite measure spaces. Right? We have been working under uh, sigma finite, finiteness because the product uh, measure is defined only for sigma finite measures. So, if two sigma finite measure spaces are given and you are given a function f on the product set x cross y uh, which is measurable with respect to the product sigma algebra a times b then the following conditions any one of the following conditions namely f is non negative and secondly f is integrable. And the third condition that is the iterated integral of mod f with respect to y and then with respect to x is finite or the other one the iterated integral of mod f with respect to mu and then with respect to nu is finite. So, if any one of these four conditions is satisfied then we can say that the integral of the function f over x cross y with respect to the product sigma algebra is equal to both of the iterated integrals and namely either integrating with respect to y first and then with respect to x or integrating with respect to x first and then with respect to y. So, basically uh, these three uh, integrals are equal in the sense that if either of them exists then all the three will exist and are equal. So, basically Fubini's theorem says that the two iterated integrals are equal and equal to the product uh, inter equal to the integral over the with respect to the product uh, measure whenever either of these uh, things uh, either of these uh, integrals uh, are defined. For example, if f is non negative then uh, these are all defined and hence they should be equal by Fubini's theorem 1 and if f is L 1 then 
the product then integral of f x y over x cross y that exists. So, this these all three must be equal and uh, other iterative integrals of mod f they are equal into saying f is l 1. So, they all will be uh, equal. So, this is what uh, is called the combined Fibonacci theorem and it is of uh, importance. Uh, we will see a lot of applications of this uh, soon. So, uh, let us look at uh, some uh, examples. So, uh, I want to stress this point uh, namely that in the statement of the theorem, we have assumed the condition that mu and nu are sigma finite uh, measures. So, these conditions are going to be important. So, let us look at some examples to illustrate this. So, let us look at uh, the space when x is equal to y is equal to 0 1. So, my underlying space is x is same as y as uh, the interval 0 1 and the two sigma algebras sigma algebra a is same as the sigma algebra b is equal to Borel sigma algebra the sigma algebra Borel subsets of uh, uh, 0 1. So, let us define the measure mu to be the Lebesgue measure on a and the measure nu on uh, the, when treated as y 0 1 as treated as other space we define it to be the counting measure. So, what is the counting measure? Counting measure is the number of elements in a set E if the set E is finite otherwise it is equal to plus infinity. So, we have got uh, two major spaces. So, let us uh, look at uh, the example that we have gotten. So, we have got uh, x which is equal to 0 1. The sigma algebra A is the Borel sigma algebra on 0 1 and mu is Lebesgue measure. On the other side, we have got y which is again 0 1 and the sigma algebra B is again the sigma algebra of Borel subset of 0 1 and we have got nu which is equal to the counting measure. Okay. So, counting measure as defined it is if the set E is finite then it is a number of elements other it is equal to plus infinity. So, now let us look at the product space x cross y a times b and mu cross nu. So, let us look at the product space. So, let us look at uh, the set. So, we are going to look at the set d which is uh, the set x is equal to y. So, this is uh, you will note that x cross y this is a subset of x cross y. So, the claim is that this is a closed subset of x cross y and hence is an element in a cross b. So, what is our space x cross y? x cross y is if you pictureize it is just 0 1 cross 0 1. Okay. So, that is the our space this is 1 1 and what is uh, d? We are looking at the set d which is contained in this the set d which is contained in this. So, that is d is equal to x comma y x is equal to y. So, that is the so that is a this line is my d. So, the claim is that this d is a Borel set. So, one way of looking at it is the d is closed in x cross y. Uh, what is the meaning of a, uh, that this set is closed? So, one way of showing that this is a closed subset of uh, 0 1 is uh, to show that it contains all its uh, uh, limit points that is one way of showing it. So, if I take a sequence x n comma y n belonging to D and x n comma y n converges to say x y okay, then claim we should be able to show that x is equal to y. But let us note x n y n belonging to D that implies so note that x n is equal to y n because x n comma y n belongs to D is the diagonal and x n y n converging to x y so, this implies so this condition implies that x n converges to x and y n converges to 
y. So, x n is equal to y n, x n converges to x, y n converges to y. So, all that will imply that x is equal to y. So, this set D, the set D is a closed subset of 0 1. So, implying that D belongs to the product sigma algebra A times B. Okay. So, that is uh, the D is a closed subset of uh, 0 1. Next, we want to compute the iterated integrals of the indicator function of the set D of this diagonal with respect to mu and the claim is that the if I integrate, if I fix one of the variables say y and integrate the indicator function of D with respect to x, then this is equal to 0 for every y and the other, other integral when we fix x integrate with respect to y the counting measure that is equal to 1 for every x. So, that will imply that the two iterated integrals are not equal, one of them is equal to 0 and the other one is equal to 1. So, let us verify this first. So, let us verify that the, so let us verify the condition that if I take the indicator function of the set D x y and integrate with respect to mu okay, over x. So, the claim, so the first claim is that this is equal to 0 for every y belonging to y. So, let us see why is uh, this integral equal to 0. To uh, note that, to show that, let us observe that for fix, for fix y, we want to compute chi the indicator function of d at x y. So, what is that equal to? So, this is equal to uh, uh, this is equal to 1 if x comma y belongs to D that means x is equal to y and it is 0 if x is not equal to y. Okay. So, this function um, so this function uh, the indicator function of uh, uh, the indicator function of the diagonal for y fix takes only two values 1 and 0 and only at one point it takes the value y, it takes the value 1 when x is equal to y at all, all other points it is just uh, uh, 0. So, it is the indicator function of a singleton set and hence, so this implies that integral over x chi d x y uh, d mu x is equal to the, the indicator function of uh, the singleton set namely y x d mu x and that is single point and measure the mu is the Lebesgue measure. So, this is equal to 0. So, that says, so, so a simple observation that the indicator function of the diagonal x y is equal to 1 if x y is fixed. So, is x is equal to y otherwise it is 0. So, that proves that this is equal to 0. And similarly, let us uh, compute the other one for fix x. Let us look at the indicator function of x y equal to. So, what is that equal to? So, that is again equal to 1 if y is equal to x and is 0 if y is not equal to x. That is again the same function, but now let us observe that so, the if I integrate with respect to y of the indicator function of d x y with respect to d nu y, now nu is the counting measure. So, for one point, okay, for one of the one point when y is equal to x, the value is 1. So, the value is 1 for one point and the measure of that single point is equal to 1. So, this is equal to 1 for every x belonging to for every x belonging to x. So, that proves the required claim namely that the, uh, so that proves the required claim namely the, in, the integral of d, uh, indicator function of d for every y fix is 0 and for every uh, x fix is 1. So, the iterated integral uh, with respect to uh, one of, uh, one of the iterated integrals is equal to 0 while the other iterated integral is equal to 1. So, that seems to contradict uh, Fibonacci's theorem. 
because the indicator function is a non negative function that the two iterated integrals are not equal, but that is not the case because the measures involved both of them are not sigma uh, not both of them are sigma uh, uh, Lebesgue measure is sigma finite, but the counting measure is uh, not sigma finite. So, this does not contradict Fibonacci theorem since the measure counting measure is not sigma finite. You the counting measure of the whole uh, interval 0 1 is infinite and you cannot uh, divide it into countable number of pieces each having finite because 0 1 is uncountable. So, the counting measure is not sigma finite. So, that is why this does not uh, contradict Fibonacci theorem. Let us look at another example. Let us look at uh, two sets. Uh, once again, the underlying space is same x is equal to y is equal to 0 1 and A, the sigma algebra on both of them is equal to the Borel sigma algebra. And now, let us look at measures mu equal to nu to be the Lebesgue measure. So, basically what we are doing is we are taking 0 1, the Borel sigma algebra and the Lebesgue measure and take a copy of it and take the product of that. Let us define a function of two variables f x y to be equal to x square minus y square divided by x square plus y square to the power 2, if x and y is not equal to 0 0 and it is equal to 0 if, if it is 0 otherwise. So, uh, the first of all uh, we want to claim that this function uh, f of x y is a measurable function on the product sigma algebra. So, that for that um, one has to uh, look at uh, the basic properties of functions of two variables, uh, one can show that this function is continuous everywhere except at 0. So, it is almost everywhere continuous function of two variables and hence it is going to be a, a, a measurable function with respect to the product uh, sigma algebra, algebra that is a Borel sigma algebra on the square uh, 0 1 cross 0 1. So, saying that f is a measurable function requires a proof and the proof uh, I am giving you a hint. The hint is as follows. Look at this function, this function as a function of two variables. Okay. So, let me uh, just write down the steps so that uh, you are able to verify yourself later on. So, let us look at the function f on x cross y. So, that is 0 1 cross 0 1 to r. So, this is a function which we are saying is f of x y x square minus y square divided by x square plus y square square if x y not equal to 0 0 and it is equal to 0 if uh, x y is equal to 0 0. So, the claim is this function f is continuous on x cross y that is 0 1 cross 0 1 except at the point 0 0. So, at 0 0 if you can uh, you can see that if I uh, if I take uh, y to be equal to 0 that is x square divided by x to the power 4. So, it looks like 1 over x square and as x approaches 0 it is going to blow up. So, it is not continuous at the point 0 0, but that does not matter. So, that means f is continuous almost everywhere because one point does not matter. So, implies so that is implies so implies f is continuous almost everywhere. So, if, and this continuous almost everywhere implies f is Borel measurable. Okay. Because uh, uh, continuous means inverse images of open sets are open and hence uh, they will be Borel sets. Okay. And um, to show that inverse image of every Borel set is Borel, you apply that uh, sigma algebra technique. So, this we have shown that every continuous function is uh, uh, continuous almost everywhere is the Borel measurable. So, using uh, using hey in this step you will be using the sigma algebra technique. So, look at uh, all sets for inverse images are Borel, open sets are inside and so on. So, this uh, will prove that this is a 
uh, this will prove that this is a measurable function. Now, let us compute the iterated integrals um, of this function with respect to the two the measures separately. So, let us first uh, observe that for every fix x. So, let us look at uh, for every fix x, if I fix x okay, any point, okay, then this is a function which looks like minus y square divided by x square plus y square over whole square. So, that is function of y for every x fix continuous almost everywhere except at the point 0. So, it is going to be a Riemann integrable function. So, it is a function for every fix x, it is uh, a function which is Riemann integrable function of y and uh, if you look at the uh, integrand, it is the derivative of the function y divided by x square plus y square. So, partial derivative of the function y divided by x square plus y square is equal to f of x y. So, I know the antiderivative of this function for every fix x. So, I can integrate it out with respect to uh, the variable y. So, when I integrate f x y with respect to the variable y, because it is a Lebesgue measure we are integrating and for Riemann integrable function Lebesgue integral is same as the Riemann integral. So, that will give me that the integral 0 to 1 of f x y d nu y is equal to 1 over because y is 1. So, that will give me integral of this is equal to 1 over 1 plus x square. And now, that we, we want to integrate with respect to x. So, integrate uh, this with respect to x and that uh, we know how to integrate this function 1 over 1 plus x square by substitutions putting uh, trigonometric substitutions. So, we uh, I leave it for you to verify that the integral of 1 over 1 plus x square between 0 to 1 is equal to uh, pi by 4. So, one of the iterated integrals is equal to pi by 4, but a simple observation in the function tells me that if I change x to y. So, let us look at the function. If I change x to y, okay, interchange x and y, then you get a negative sign outside because there is a negative x square minus y square. So, that so I do not have to compute the other iterated integral by using this property that if I interchange x and y that gives me a negative sign. So, if I want to integrate first with respect to x and then with respect to y, it will answer will be same as the earlier one with a negative sign. So, the other, other iterated integral is going to be minus pi by 4. So, for this function of two variables, we have got two iterated integrals, one of them equal to pi by 4 and the other is minus pi by 4 and both the measures here are sigma finite. So, the question is uh, what is going wrong? So, we have got uh, two uh, sigma finite uh, measure spaces, actually the same measure space 0 1 Borel sigma algebra and Lebesgue measure and on this we have got a function uh, f x y equal to x square minus y square divided by x square plus y square when not the point is not 0, 0 and this function has got iterated integrals which are different. So, uh, does this not contradict Fibonius theorem? The answer is no is simply because now these iterated integrals are different um, because the function uh, is not uh, uh, integrable on the product space. So, we cannot uh, apply uh, Fibonius theorem 2 to it. So, let us verify that uh, with respect to the product uh, sigma algebra, the function is not integrable and that is a very simple observation. So, let us look at that. So, look at the function uh, for two variables. So, let us look at mod of f x y. Okay. So, this mod of f x y with respect to two variables, this is a non-negative uh, function. So, by Fibonius theorem 1, we know that this is equal to the iterated integral of mod f x y with respect to say variable y. Okay. So, that we can, uh, because the integrand is non-negative and x is in the inner integral, the x is fixed between 0 and 1. So, we can write the iterated integral from 0 to x. So, it will become bigger than or equal to. So, the integral of absolute value of f x y with respect to the product sigma algebra product measure is bigger than or equal to integral 0 to 1 integral 0 to x of mod f x y uh, d nu y, but mod of that is nothing but uh, 1 over x and so let us just look at uh, 
mod of uh, in 0 to x, here uh, x is fixed with respect to y. So, once you compute that uh, inner integral, so that is nothing but 1 over x 0 to pi by 2 cos 2 theta and uh, those and that can be computed and that comes out to be 1 over 2. So, it is 1 over 2 x d mu x and which is uh, equal to plus infinity because 1 over x is not integrable. So, uh, a simple computation so shows that this function is uh, not uh, integrable. So, as a consequence uh, the, again the Fubini's theorem is not contradicted because uh, the two integrated integrals are not equal because the function is not uh, integrable. And let us look at uh, an application of uh, uh, Fubini's theorem. We want to prove that if f is a integrable function on x a mu and g is another integrable function on y b v nu, then look at the product of the two functions f x and g y. So, phi x y is equal to f x into g y. The claim is that this function is integrable and its integral is equal to the integral of f into integral of g. So, let us uh, uh, show this as a simple application of uh, Fubini's theorem. So, we want to uh, look at a function f. So, we have got a measure space x a mu of course, sigma finite and f is a function defined on x and f belongs to L 1 of x. And on the other hand for y b nu, we have got uh, a function g okay, y to r and g belongs to L 1 of y. So, define phi. So, we are defining a function phi on x cross y taking values in r and the function defined is phi of x y is equal to phi of x y is equal to f x g y for every x y. So, claim that phi belongs to L 1 of x cross y. So, that is what we want to show. right? So, let us uh, see how does the uh, proof, uh, how will the proof go? How will the proof of uh, this theorem go? So, phi belongs to L 1. So, that is we want to show mod phi x y integral over x cross y d mu cross nu is finite. So, this is what we want to uh, show. Okay. So, to show that it is enough to show. So, let us uh, observe to show this enough to show because of Fubini's theorem 1 or uh, earlier. So, uh, so, to show this, so this is what we want to show. So, enough to show say for example, integral with respect to y of phi x y integral with respect to x, uh, this is d mu of y, d mu of x is finite. So, enough to uh, prove this, that this is uh, finite. Okay. But let us uh, compute what is this quantity. So, this quantity is equal to the inner one integral over y, phi x y is f x g y. So, it is mod of f x mod of g y okay, d nu of y integral over x of d mu x. So, this so this which we want to show is finite is equal to this. Now, this is independent of integral x is fixed. So, this is independent. So, it is integral over x mod of f x okay, inside is integral over y of mod of g y d nu y d mu of x. Okay. And now, g is integrable. So, this quantity is finite. Okay. So, this quantity is finite. So, what is that quantity equal to? So, let us uh, write what is this quantity equal to 
so this quantity is equal to so this is a constant it is finite so it comes out so i can write this quantity is equal to integral over x mod fx d mu x integral over y mod g y d nu of y okay and that is finite because both of them are finite so what we have shown is that integral of mod of fx y the iterated integral is finite so that just now we observed that is equivalent to saying that the function mod fx y is less than finite so this will imply that phi belongs to l1 so phi is a l1 function so now so so we have proved so so let us just say so this last thing that we proved implies that phi is l1 because of product space l x cross y because it is in l1 so fubini's theorem is applicable so implies by fubini's theorem 2 that the integral of x cross y of phi x y d mu cross nu is equal to the iterated integral either one we can write so let us write it over x integral over y of phi x y what that is f x g y d nu y and d mu x and that as now just now we observed uh, this is independent of the integrand is independent of y so this you can take it out so this is equal to integral over x f x integral over y integral over g d nu d mu and that uh, is precisely so this integral that we have written is precisely equal to integral over x of f x d mu x the first one and the second one is integral over y g y d nu y right so that is uh, that's how uh, fubini's theorem is applied so you have seen that two applications of fubini's theorem to prove this result namely that if f is l1 so if f is a l1 uh, function then um, and g is a l1 function on y then the product is a l1 function on the product space and integral is equal to the product of the two so this is how uh, fubini's theorems are going to be uh, applied and uh, so let me just uh, re uh, uh, recollect or revise what we have done till now given uh, product uh, given the product measures x a mu and uh, y b nu which are both uh, sigma finite we constructed the product sigma uh, product sigma algebra a times b the product uh, measure mu cross nu so we got the product measure space x cross y a times b and uh, mu cross nu so for this product measure uh, we uh, the first thing we did was how to compute uh, uh, the measure of a uh, set in the product sigma algebra so we said you can go via sections and so that gave us uh, uh, that the product measure mu cross nu of a set e is same as you look at the x section ex look at the measure of that nu of ex and integrate with respect to x or similarly do with respect to y so that gave us ways of computing the product measure of uh, a set in the product sigma algebra and that result when interpreted as an integral gave us the first fubini's theorem namely uh, uh, for non negative measurable functions you can fix one variable at a time and integrate it out and then we extended this to functions of uh, uh, to functions which are not necessarily uh, non negative but integrable so those gave us the fubini's theorems uh, so in the next lecture what we'll do is we'll now specialize when x is the real line y is the real line a is the borel sigma algebra b is the borel sigma algebra or lebesgue sigma algebras and look at the product uh, measure lebesgue measure product of the lebesgue measure on x that is real line and product measure uh, and the lebesgue measure on y that is again uh, real line so uh, we'll look at 
the Lebesgue measure space on the real line and take its product with itself to come to a, a notion of a measure Lebesgue measure on the plane, which will extend the notion of area um, in the plane. So, we will continue this uh, um, study in our next lecture. Thank you.